here we go still very fucking bright though we have to just live with it i guess hi there it's Ole here and today we're gonna talk about skincare and more specifically how to choose skincare that's for your skin and needs and in honor of skincare i have chosen not to put any makeup on my face more than just my mascara a little bit of eyebrows because girl doesn't have eyebrows unless she does them if you follow me on instagram you might have seen uh, this picture pop up on your feed and if you haven't you should totally follow me on instagram i will link it down below i love bullet journaling and i love skincare so i just sort of combined the two and came up with this four page spread uh, about skincare and i just wanted to share my knowledge about it now with that said i am in no way shape or form a skincare expert. I just find skincare so interesting and fascinating and sometimes you just want to share what you know. So before this intro gets way too long let's just jump into it. So I have my bullet journal right over here and we're gonna go through the different steps on how to choose skincare that's for your skin and needs. The first step is to figure out what your skin type is. When talking about skin types, there are usually five different types that you talk about. Dry skin, normal skin, oily skin, combination skin, and sensitive skin. But to think that there is only like five different skin types in a world where there are millions and millions and millions of people, kind of ridiculous. So I would rather think of it as a scale where you in one end have dry skin, and in the other end, you have oily skin. Like a sort of dryness or oiliness scale. Let's start off with dry skin. So if you have dry skin, you probably have some sort of issue with your natural moisture barrier. And it will make your skin feel tight, crusty at some point, and just dry. That's why it's called dry. In the other end of the scale, we have oily skin and if you have oily skin it's the result of excess sebum production and uh, it will make your skin feel sticky or greasy and it will give you like a shiny finish because there's just so much natural moisture from the skin that it's like overflowing and that is what oily skin is somewhere in the middle we have normal skin and that is when everything is well balanced within your skin it's not too dry it's not too oily it's just right there in the middle now you have probably noticed that i've just talked about three out of the five skin types that i just a second ago counted up and that's because the other two is more like an addition to the three that i just described for example if you have combination skin which is the fourth type it's a combination of different skin types on different parts of your face. For example, you can have a oily forehead, dry cheeks, normal nose, or any other kind of combination. The fifth and the last skin type is sensitive skin. And that is when your skin is easily reacting to different ingredients in skincare or in just in general. You can have either dry and sensitive skin, oily and sensitive skin or normal and sensitive skin the sensitive part just tells you that you have to be careful with what sort of products you use and that they are not too harsh on your skin because otherwise you probably will feel maybe burning uh, extreme dryness or uh, redness for example now we have gone through the five different skin types and if you feel like you recognize yourself in any of these skin types that's probably because you have it if you are still a bit unsure you could always ask a friend a family member but more specifically you could always go to the store where they sell a lot of skincare and ask those who work there and if you want to be really really thorough go to like a skin expert of some sort and uh, make them evaluate your skin type now when we have established your skin type it's time to go on to the next step and the next step we need to figure out what your skin goal is and what is a skin goal first need to 
ask yourself, how does dream skin look like to me? What does it look like when your skin is perfect, flawless, it's everything you ever wanted? How does that look like? Maybe there is someone out there that you know that has like the perfect skin, in your opinion. Or maybe you had perfect skin and now it's not living up to that experience. Or maybe there are some famous people or influencers that you look up to because they have really nice skin. Either way, you need to establish what you think is perfect skin. Once you figure out what you want your skin to look like, it's time to look at the parts of your face and see which parts are living up to that and which are not. To answer these questions, you kind of need to look at the different parts of your face and really look at them. I do recommend doing this step with a mirror because some people don't really look at their skin, apparently. I, I might be the only one. <laughs> so sit by a mirror or stand by a mirror, whatever you want to, and look at these different parts of your skin and ask yourself, is it good enough? And if it's not, why not? Start off with the overall skin, the big parts of your face. So for that we have the forehead, the cheeks, and the neck because yes the neck is a part of your whole skincare as well it's the first part of your entire body together with your hands that will show you aging of that you go into the specific which is your eyes your nose and your mouth now i do have to say that i'm super proud of this specific page because as you can see the picture over here is both illustrating a boy and a girl because skincare is for everyone it's not a gender specific thing the only thing is that some brands just like to advertise to girls more than boys and i know that there are a lot of girly products out there but that doesn't mean that you can't use it if you're a boy or if you're or something in between. Just remember that skincare is for everyone, except for animals. We don't like that. That's animal testing. Now we have figured out your skin type, your skin goals, and now we need to figure out which products you need to use. And believe me, when you get into the skincare world, it's kind of overwhelming with how much products there are out there. There's tons of products and it's very confusing. So to make this easier for you, I made a list of different skincare items you might encounter when you're out shopping for skincare. Now, before I get into the actual list of everything, I just want to mention you do not need to buy every single thing on this list. That's kind of unnecessary. You will only need the things that will make you feel feel like you can reach your skin goal. And if that's maybe a couple of products or all of them, it's up to you to decide. With that said, there are two products that, in my opinion, you cannot have a skincare routine without. So if you are very minimalistic of you and you just don't want to do anything over the top, you just want the bare essentials, the two things that you will need is a cleanser and a moisturizer. You can look at these sort of as the cornerstones of your skincare because you usually start off your skincare with cleansing, you know, cleaning your face, and you usually end your skincare with moisturizing it. So let's start with the list. First up, we have the cleanser, and the cleanser's job is to clean and clear and cleanse your skin from any sort of dirt or dust or anything that you have encountered during the day. Then we have a makeup remover and the makeup remover's job is to remove makeup. So if you wear makeup, you probably need a makeup remover. There are people out there that sort of uses makeup removers as their cleanser, but I do highly recommend if you do use makeup, do the double cleanse. The double cleanse basically means you take off your makeup, then you cleanse your face. So you do it twice and I know it's a little bit too much for some people and it's not necessarily the most easiest way to do it but believe me when I say that it will save your skin. Then we have the toner and the toner's job is to restore your skin after cleansing it 
because sometimes cleansing is soaps or washes or whatever can be a bit harsh and the toner's job is to sort of restore the balance of your skin. Then there's the face mist and the face mist main job is to give you some hydration during the day. Then we have the serum and serums have actually become really popular these days together with essence. Uh, I will go to that in a little bit but first of all serum. Don't mind me I kind of have to read the serum and the essence ones because I just don't want them to get wrong. So <clears throat> serum high concentration of a few active ingredients that target specific skin concerns. <laughs> My god, that was too hard for me to memorize by myself. And then we have the essence. And the difference between a serum and the essence is, just give me a second, that the essence is less concentrated than a serum and adds additional hydration. And after that we have face oils. Why is that word so hard for me? The main purpose of it is to give intense hydration to your skin. Then we have the eye cream and actually it's just a hydrating cream around your eyes. And some people feel like they, it's enough to just have a moisturizer and put that around your eyes. Personally, I don't think that for several <laughs> reasons. But why you would have a different moisturizer for your skin around your eyes is because the skin around your eyes is actually a lot thinner than the rest of the face. Then we have the moisturizer and it is mainly to prevent your skin from drying out. Then we have SPF or sunscreen and that is to protect your face from the UV rays from the sun that is actually damaging your skin. You can either get intense burns from the sun or it will fast forward the aging process uh, and things like that. <laughs> Those products are more for daily use where you can use it during the evening or during the morning and some products you can even do during the day. But there are some products out there that are not for daily use that you maybe do once a week or twice a week and they are more like intense treatments than your daily taking care of yourself treatment. <laughs> First off we have a physical exfoliator which is like a scrub or any sort of cream that has these beads in it that is supposed to exfoliate your skin. Then we have chemical exfoliation and that is when uh, the product is dissolving this dead skin cells like a chemical peel. A lot of people are afraid of this chemical exfoliation genre or whatever, but it's actually a lot more safe, a lot more gentle on your skin than a physical exfoliator that has beads or salt or sugar or whatever it is in them. There is a risk of actually making your pores or your skin more damaged when you use a physical exfoliator and that's because you're sort of scratching your face and you can get the, like these micro wounds on your face so a physical exfoliator isn't always the best choice sometimes it is sometimes it isn't it all depends on the product and last off we have the face masks oh the face masks a face mask is a treatment to a specific skin concern that you have. Now for the fourth and last step of this journey that we have been through, it's time to prioritize. And by prioritizing, I mean, let's find out which aspects of a product will determine if you buy it or not. And this step could either be the easiest step of them all or the hardest one. So just bear that in mind, but it all depends on your preference and your thoughts about different things about the skincare world. For some people the price point is very important, for others the ingredients have a big role in whether or not they will buy it or not, and for some people it's just the aesthetic of the product. Either way, let's just be honest to yourself and even if there are some parts of these things that you sort of wished you cared about but you actually don't then just be honest with yourself because in the end 
you are the one who needs to use these products. And if there's something about these products that is, that is not attractive to you, you're more likely than not to not use it. So this little list that I made, or more specifically, my question bubbles, is just a suggestion. There are tons of more different aspects than those that I have come up with myself. And if there are some that you have come up with that you want me to add to this, please let me know if it is on my Instagram post or on this video. Just, I would love to know because this page was the hardest one for me to visualize because I didn't really know what I wanted to tell you, so to speak. But let's start off with the easy ones. So what is your budget? For some people, budget is key. If it is that you don't have a high budget and you want your products to be as low of a cost as possible, or if you feel like, yeah, my skincare is like taking care of myself, I want it to be luxury or whatever, then you have a higher price point than someone that doesn't have that money. Also, the ingredients can be very important. So, for example, are there something that you're allergic to? Maybe you don't like to heavy perfumes or fragrance. Maybe you don't want the actual products to have too much color. Or do you maybe want to have color? Is the ingredients natural? Or does that not even matter to you? For others, the ethical aspect has a lot of meaning. So... If it's cruelty free, which means basically is this product tested by animals can be something that makes you want to buy a product or not. Also, if it's vegan, if it's clean beauty, maybe even if the packaging is reusable or recyclable or not. There are tons of different things. I just want to get your mind into the mindset of what aspects do you care about and what do you not? Even like the outside packaging of a product can be determining whether or not you buy it. Like I said before, skincare is for everyone, but advertisement is a thing. And there are a lot and a lot of skincare that's very specifically targeting women. Even if you're a woman or a man, uh, elder or a young person it doesn't matter because you can still take care of your face but I actually talked about this with my fiance even though he doesn't really care about how a product looks like I do know there's a bigger chance that he will use this specific product if it's not like pink and have bunnies on it so if you want your packaging to be very minimal very manly or very girly it's up to you. What are you attracted to in that regards? That can also determine if you buy a product or not. And that was the last step. Now we have mapped out what your skin type is, what your skin goal is, what products there are out there, and what products maybe you can actually use for one reason or other. And then lastly, what in a product will make you buy it or not. Now we should have a pretty good idea of what we want instead of like having this ginormous world of skincare, we have minimized it to maybe this much at least. I do want you to know though that skincare is kind of a trial and error, that sometimes you buy products and it works wonders and sometimes they're not. Sometimes you have used the products for the longest time and it's your holy grail and one day it's not. And that's okay because your skin is changing and we just want to make sure that it changes in a direction that we like and that we are comfortable with and that is what skincare is going to help us with and that's it <laughs> i have no idea how long this video is but i am so glad that i did it because i am just so happy about things that are skincare and i am so happy to share that with you and yeah if you think that this was a good or a bad like video please let me know if there's anything that you feel like is missing or that you would add please let me know i would love to you know build on this little method or whatnot 
and make it even easier and make it even more in detail and in depth. But this is what I came up with right now and I do hope it's helpful in some way, shape or form. And especially if you're new to the skincare world but you still want to, you know, get into it and take care of yourself. I do hope this helps you because that's basically why I did this video. But with that said, thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye!